All righty, good morning again. This is uh, Retrograde Entropy, I guess. Uh, haven't figured out another name for this YouTube channel, but whatever. We're talking about chronic fatigue syndrome, and yeah, I'm I'm doing okay today. Yesterday was pretty bad, but it's because it was my uh, shopping day. So I do all my shopping on the one day. Um, it's basically the only shopping I do every week. And then I buy everything in the morning at like 7 a.m. because it's nice and quiet in the shopping center, which is good for Asperger's. And then I come home, leave it for a couple of hours, sort of recover a bit. And then in the afternoon, I do all my cooking. And doing all the cooking was, yeah, it's quite a hassle. It's quite, I'm not going to say exhausting because exhausting is a whole other level, but it's it's very tiring to do all that cooking. So yesterday is bas was basically just a wreck by the end of it. Um, but today I've got nothing really on. I need to go out and have a shave at some point because I'm having dinner with some people tomorrow night. So I want to have a shave before then. So either today or tomorrow, I'm going to have to do that. But anyway, it's fine. Feeling a little bit crook this morning, a little bit of stomach problems. I did have a new meal, a newly cooked meal yesterday afternoon, but I also had some stuff for a bakery at lunch and then an old meal from the week before in the morning. So I'm hoping it's one of the latter two that made me crook and not the new meal that I cooked yesterday. Cause if that made me crook, then, you know, that sucks. Cause that means the rest of the week possibility of being crook, which I do not want. I want the rest of the week to just be absolutely wonderful. And it's also possible those little twiggy sticks making me crook, but it's, you know, it's very hard to figure out what actually does it. But this is more of a long term. like sometimes you feel crook straight away, with IBS and sometimes you feel crook after like 24 hours. I'm hoping this is a 24 hour thing due to the previous week's meal because then I can just write it off and say done. Not, don't have to worry about that anymore. This week is going to be perfect. And I've got everything. I've got like 16 meals cooked. I've got um, mince for the taco. So I've got every single meal covered for the a single week. I don't have to get takeaway. don't have to do anything. It's all covered. So that's done and hopefully the diet this will be a test for this week and if it works well then it works well and i'll just repeat forever after i so i got two meals with cooked meat the chicken sticks and the drumsticks which i cooked a lot better this time should be right and i've got two meals with the deli meat and I, we'll see how they go and next week i might drop like the chicken sticks or the drumsticks and buy a fully cooked chicken and then take it home and cook it for an extra 10 minutes or something like that, just to get over, just to make sure that it's thoroughly cooked. And then that's it. And that's a lot easier than cooking something from scratch. But anyway, um, that's my situation, but I'm feeling pretty good today. Um, no work, obviously. This is the Monday, so this is the official start of the first week out of the 17 or so weeks that I've got off. So it feels like it's going pretty slowly. It feels like a ton of time it has gone past, but it's only been like three days off. This is my fourth day off technically, but it feels like so much has happened. Maybe because I'm doing this recording every morning, it feels like I'm motivating myself to get more done or think about getting more done at least. So that's definitely a good thing. Um, I do want to talk about something else, something bigger today, but just a quick note. Um, I did struggle with the, uh, with the computer, doing too much computer yesterday as well. Um, I did try those logic books and the puzzle books. They held my attention for like five minutes. And after that, I was just like, oh, I, what I actually thought is this would be so much more interesting if I was doing it on a computer. It's like, screw doing it in a book. Uh, <laughs> part of it's the tendonitis, but then again, I don't know, just not really. I'm just making excuses. Yes, I just like doing things on the computer. So I've got to find something not on the computer to do. And movies are kind of, but meh, not really. So anyway, that's that. What I really want to talk about today is a, um, a theory I had. Not so much a theory, but an analogy, which I think is really good for describing the, um, the recovery process for CFS. And I'm calling this the lake analogy. So the deal with the lake analogy is, uh, I want you to imagine that Every single person in the world has their own private lake and they've got a little speedboat and they drive around the lake and they have lots of fun. And that's basically what living is, is just driving around on the lake. 
So most people's lakes are fine. They just drive around and, you know, they just do whatever. Now, if you've got CFS, or this could potentially be applied to any other problem, but definitely, definitely CFS, then you will have, I was going to Google this, but you've got stalagmites underneath the lake. So it's little, just pointy rock structures. I'm not sure if it's stalactite or stalagmite, but little pointy rock structures that point up and scratch the boat as you're going over it. And some of them are higher and some of them are lower. Some of them don't quite reach the boat. Some of them reach up and absolutely mash the crap out of the boat. So if you've got CFS, you're driving around, you're constantly being hit by these spiky rocks and you're constantly... And overall, they're making you feel crappy. And the rocks represent different things. Like for me, there'll be one rock representing eating bread. That makes me feel crappy. There'll be another rock representing light. So, you know, bright light shining in my eyes, too much noise, all the different things that represent, you know, making you feel worse when you've got CFS. So the way to cure yourself, the way to... I shouldn't say cure because there is no cure, but the best way to recover from CFS is draining the lake, basically. So what you do is you... Draining the lake is kind of a euphemism for investigating the symptoms, going to a doctor, figuring out what's wrong, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Um, and what that does is it drops the water level and the things that are wrecking your boat under the water, they suddenly become up. They're above the water level now. You can see them and you can avoid them. And so as long as you avoid them, they're not a problem. You can still hit them, but now you can see them coming. And so it's a lot easier to avoid them. But what that does, the water level drops down. And because the water level drops down, you're feeling a lot better because you're not hitting those spikes you were. But now you're hitting new spikes because there's these spikes that were lower that maybe you were only scraping a tiny bit before. Um but now you're hitting them a lot harder and they're doing a lot more damage. Um, it's, all, it's all relative, I guess you could say, because as the water drops, those, the larger spikes always make you feel worse, like massively worse. So if you're no longer eating the bread, your life just gets a whole lot better. You feel a lot more energy. And because you get a lot more energy and because you're feeling a lot more better, the little spikes the lower down spikes, previously, if you hit them, you wouldn't notice because they're just noise at that point. They're just tiny little bits of noise. But now the water level's dropped and you're not hitting the really big spikes anymore. The little spikes seem a lot bigger. They, they seem like they're having a much more impact because they are the big spikes now, okay? You've dropped the water level down. Now these are the big spikes, and they're still having a smaller impact than the other big, the, the bigger spikes, but relative to how you're feeling now, how you're feeling much better, these little spikes now seem a lot bigger. So then you've got to figure out what these little spikes are, then you've got to drain the water again, and it's kind of an iterative process. So you figure out what the big problems are first, you get rid of them, you feel a lot better, then you figure out what the little problems are, and you feel better again, and you just keep going and keep going and keep going until you've drained the lake to the point where you can see every single spike and you're not hitting any more spikes. Now, this does mean that you're driving around a lake full of spikes. You can see all the spikes now, but you've still got to avoid the bloody things. And that, that happens for the rest of your life. You're, the rest of your life, you've got to spend in the lake with all these spikes that you've got to avoid. And that's kind of the... Uh, that's kind of the depressing thing about chronic fatigue. As far as I can understand it, there's, there's no real cure for it. There's just a bunch of things that you have to avoid. And if you avoid all of them, then you're doing pretty good. Then you're feeling basically like everybody else. I don't know if it's possible to feel as good as everybody else, even if you avoid all the spikes. Uh, there might be some spikes that you just... I don't know. Maybe it is possible. Maybe you reveal all the spikes and then you're safe at that point. Or maybe there's just not enough room to drive around the boat because there's too many spikes. So you've got to hit some of them every now and then. Um, you know, but like if with this bread thing, like you can cut out bread, but 
what if it turns out that beets is making you tired as well? You cut out bread, you cut out meat. What if, what the hell have you got left? You got basically nothing left. So you might just have to take some hits and get by at that point. But I don't think meat is making me tired. So maybe that's not a problem. But anyway, the point is, you know, what's that lake going to look like when you've drained it as much as you possibly can to the point where you can see all the spikes? I don't know. I think I'm about halfway there, maybe a little bit more than halfway there as far as because I've drained a lot of it and I can see a lot of spikes. Um, but I'm not perfect yet, so there may still be some draining that needs to happen. So anyway, that's my analogy for chronic fatigue syndrome. I, uh, I definitely hope it's helpful to some people. But the... the Oh, that's my phone doing something. I guess the thing that you got to take away from this is if, you've, if you're feeling bad and you've got chronic fatigue you're not feeling bad because you've got chronic fatigue. You're feeling bad because there's a bunch of spikes out there that you're constantly running over and they're making you feel crap, okay? So you've got to figure out what those spikes are. You've got to figure out how to avoid them, and that's draining the water. So you figure out what they are and then avoid them, and then you will feel better, and you can focus on the next, next set of spikes. And that's all that recovering from chronic fatigue is. It's basically yeah doing that um and i guess there's some spikes that you just can't avoid it like work like going to work the environment at work is a big spike for me it's a very big spike um so i guess i'm taking time off now to avoid work so that i've got the freedom to figure out all the other spikes so there's a whole bunch of little spikes in there haven't really been able to figure out what they are to figure out how to deal with them because I've been hitting this big spike every day, well, every work day, and it's just been like, ugh, I don't have the energy to, to drain the to drain the lake anymore. Like, I, I couldn't keep draining the lake at the rate that I wanted to because I was hitting this spike every day. So now I'm avoiding that spike for four months. I'm going to spend all my time draining the lake as fast as I can. So when I go back to hitting that big spike, hopefully that's the only spike that I'm hitting and everything else is beautiful. So anyway, there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I think this has been the end of this video. Um, I will let you guys know how my meals are doing this week. I'm very, very hopeful that th those problems are over, that I can just say, boom, this is my diet. Um, and I'd like to get to the point where I don't have to cook anything from raw anymore, because that's too much of a toss up. I'd like to get, to, I always want to get to the point where I just chuck like eight chicken drumsticks in, say 70 minutes, done. They're cooked perfectly every time. It never happens. It never happens. It never happened in the oven. It, I thought it would happen in the convection oven, which is kind of a microwave, but no, it hasn't. Sometimes they just come out not good. So anyway, if I, if I get fully cooked chickens though, and I chuck them in and I do them for 10 minutes, I feel like that could be a bit better because it's a more stable state when you get the cooked chicken uh, in 10 minutes you know it's it's probably okay so anyway moving on from that um i will catch you guys later i suppose catch you guys tomorrow and i i guess i'll continue to uh try and brainstorm about the uh the computer situation um yeah we'll see how we go all right i'll uh, see you guys later